But that's who Saul had the potential to be. And he threw it away because he refused to do what God asked him to do. And I want, like I said, this is very simple, but it's profound. What could we be if we did what God asked? How many times has our defiance of the Lord caused us to do something that we shouldn't have done, which may have resulted in us throwing away an opportunity? What could we be if we just did what God asked us to do? Hey, fellow tacticians, be sure to like this video and subscribe and ring that little notification bell. That supports this channel's conservative content, which is good for me, good for you, good for America, but really bad for the dark cyber overlords at YouTube. In 1775, the Continental Congress created the Chaplain Corps. Under the command of General George Washington, each soldier was required to attend worship service every Sunday. While other armies advanced on their feet, Washington's troops advanced on their knees. It's time for The Chaplain's Report with Caleb Colquitt on tactics. Today's Chaplain's Report is probably going to be a pretty short one because I do think the message contained within this passage of Scripture is profound. But like a lot of profound messages, it's pretty simple. So let's go ahead and look at 1 Samuel 22, verses 6 through 7. Now, to just give a little bit of setup, you remember that when we last left David, he's fleeing from King Saul and he goes to the temple to take of the showbread because he and his men are hungry. Then he picks up the sword of Goliath along the way, but then he runs away from that. Well, this is right after that, and this is how Saul reacts to this whole thing. So let's go ahead and look in chapter 22, verses 6 through 8. Then Saul heard that David and the men who were with him had been discovered. Now Saul was at Gibeah, sitting under the terrace tree on the height with his spear in his hand, and all his servants were standing in front of him. Saul said to his servants who were standing in front of him, Here now, you Benjamites, will the son of Jesse really give you all your fields and vineyards? Will he make you, all you commanders of thousands and commanders of hundreds? For all of you have conspired against me so that there is no one who informs me when this, my son makes a covenant with the son of Jesse. And there is none of you who cares about me or informs me that my son has stirred up my servant against me to lie in ambush as it is this day. So a couple things are very obvious. First of all, Saul's paranoia, as we've talked about many times in this series on the book of 1 Samuel, is absolutely out of control. He's convinced that everybody's against him, that nobody likes him, that nobody's actually trying to help him, that uh, David's trying to ambush him, which is bizarre because David's never done anything except exactly what Saul asked him to do. And yet he is convinced that David is trying to take his throne from him. He is absolutely convinced there is not, no doubt in his mind that everyone, you heard him say it just there, is conspiring against him. And you notice that the Bible is very careful to say he was standing in front of all of his men and he had his spear in hand. What does that imply? I think what it means is he was not doing this on a friendly basis. He's threatening people. He's got his spear up. He's pointing it around at people. He's making a point that he believes that everybody here is conspiring against him and he's about to take vengeance on them. He's trying to scare them into giving up information on David. Now, maybe they have it, maybe they don't, and, and actually we do find out that there's a man there that does know a little bit of something of, of where David went, but he wasn't like hiding it or anything, at least not so far as we know. But he's so paranoid, he's now threatening the people that he's supposed to trust the most, the ones that are going to be fighting for him. Look, David still had no intention of harming him whatsoever. We, we know this based on events that happened afterward where David had every opportunity to take Saul's life and would not do it. It, it. He had at least two opportunities to kill Saul then and there and have it done with, and he said, no, I will not raise my hand against God's anointed. I'm not going to do it. But Saul doesn't see that. Saul doesn't see it because he is so driven by his thirst for power and his desire to hang on to what he's got that he refuses to see any other point of view. And he's so wrapped up in this that he's threatening to kill people that are there trying to help him. 
I, I don't know how else to describe it, but it's kind of like we were talking about with the mental illnesses earlier in this episode. He is so far removed from God now, removed from hope, removed from seeing things in a different light, seeing things through God's eyes, seeing things through what's best for the country, what's best for him spiritually, what's best for his own family. He is so driven by just hanging on to his temporary crown that he's willing to sacrifice anything, even the trust of his own men that are fighting next to him, in order to get what he wants. And that is sad. That is really sad that Saul has found himself in this position. You know, Saul could have been the king that defeated the Philistines. He kind of had them on the run there for several years. Saul could have been the man that united all of Israel under one crown. And to a degree, he kind of did that, but he drove them apart again when his son took the throne where he was, and then David started to rule in Hebron and then in Jerusalem. And so he wasn't able to unite his country. He wasn't able to take on the Philistines. And that's really unfortunate because that's who he could have been, and I think that's who God intended for him to be. He knew that he wasn't going to do that eventually because God knows all things. But that's who Saul had the potential to be, and he threw it away because he refused to do what God asked him to do. And I want, like I said, this is very simple, but it's profound. What could we be if we did what God asked? How many times has our defiance of the Lord caused us to do something that we shouldn't have done, which may have resulted in us throwing away an opportunity? What could we be if we just did what God asked us to do? Because Saul could have been arguably the greatest king in Israel's history. But instead, that went to David. Because David did what God asked, Saul didn't. Think about this. Saul may have been the one through whom Christ came. Because if God sees all things, he could have told Benjamin, not Judah, that his descendants would be the one through whom the entire world would be blessed. Saul could have been the one through whom the lineage of Christ came if he had just done what God asked him to do, and he wouldn't do it. What could you be if you did what God asked you to do? What can we now still be? What do we still have the potential to be if we follow God's will and his plan for our life? I, I don't know the answer. But I can guarantee you, looking back at it, you're either going to be a David or you're going to be a Saul. You're either going to be someone that looks back on your life and goes, yeah, I made some mistakes, but I did mostly what God asked me to do, and, and I was very blessed for it. Or you're going to look back at your life and see something like Saul is like, man, so much wasted potential. God made all of us to be his servants, all of us to do good things. Saul was no exception to that. So the next time we, we have to make a decision, a moral decision, as to what we're going to do, let's just remember that and think to ourselves that if we do what God wants here, even if it's not easy, even if it's uncomfortable, even if it means we're going to be alienated from our social group or whatever else it may be, the reward is going to outweigh whatever it is we're giving up in the moment. Stay the course, friends. <laughs> Ever wonder where Superman gets his incredible powers? Some people say it's the yellow son of Earth, but I think it's because he subscribes to this channel and likes my videos. Now, I'm not saying that if you subscribe to my channel you'll necessarily wake up tomorrow as a super strong, nearly invincible alien, but it definitely doesn't hurt your chances.